Many are the times in life with no pain and suffering, but most of those times they teach us a lot. In life, I've learned that it is we are always on the battlefield, fighting every day. Life is not a fanfare, but a warfare. Keep fighting every day. Never allow anyone to limit you, because once you fight, be assured of victory. Keep fighting. Today, she chooses to share her story, to give hope, inspire, and change life. She shares her story with a smile, not because it's a picture perfect, but because all the struggles and tribulations have made her the woman she is. Thank you so much for coming to celebrate me, Kamali. Thank you for inviting me. Today we are celebrating you. So maybe you could tell our audience what are you doing and how are you are. I'm Veronica Tatunge Chalo, a girl from Mukambani Land, Mutwa's Land. I'm less than 23 years old. <laughs> Your age, specifically. I know there are a lot of people. I'm 22 years old. Um, I may say 21 and uh, three quarter because <laughs> next month I'll be turning 22. Wow, I'm a Christmas girl. baby. Happy birthday, guys. Thank you so much. I'm a student. Passing. Business administration, finance option. I'm in my last year. In the last semester, I have two weeks to say bye to school. Yo, congratulations. <laughs> so, Thank you so much. Uh, okay, so uh, I know like two years ago you went through a traumatic experience. Thank you so much for that. Back in 2016, that was May after my first year. I did my first year with my two hands and I went on for an holiday. Then I was back to begin my second year classes. In the first year, everything was well. And uh, in the first week when there are no so people like, in school, like, right? yeah, I was in school, but I never used to stay in school. I used to rent my place. Uh, a place known New York or past Gid Rai. So one of the fine afternoons, just uh, I slept the whole day and I said, let me just run to the rooftop and see what's happening. It's just a normal thing, normal, normal thing that I used to do daily uh, when I was around my place. So after taking a shower and everything, I just went to the rooftop just to see what's happening in the bypass and everything. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to get out. Like it was normal for you. Yeah, it was normal to go there, so we used to hang our clothes. So I never thought it could be a place of danger or to meet my death. It would have been this place where it was time. I could life. have ran if I knew that would happen. So I just went there is a normal thing. I don't know what really happened, but what I know, you know the place, the wires, the three place wires are close to the building. I just stood in the rooftop, just trying to check what's happening around. So, like, were there naked wires around? They're not naked wires, they're three piece wires. You understand? Yeah. But they're close to the building. Oh, yeah. So, the big question that no one answers up to the even the doctors, how I came close with the wires that they shocked me. So, like, approximately, if you approximate, how, how far? Maybe 200 meters. I cannot tell. What I know is that. I never touch the wires because you can't touch them. Even today when you go to the same place, you can't touch them. And with all the education and having done fake in high school, you understand these things are operate. Yeah. I just add that I was shocked and um, in the few seconds I found myself in the hair. It drew me backwards. Okay. You were electrocuted? Yeah, it was very painful. I just remember myself uh, shouting, God spare my life. Then. Uh, there are some businesses around in the, in the ground floor. So some women, they heard me screaming and um, I had one when I was still in the hair saying, So they were guys who were doing well so there. So like, at that time? I never went in coma, even when back in ICU. I know everything that happened, even I can tell you those took me to the hospital in Kenyatta. The doctors who treated me, the first day I was taken to theater. I know the whole story till today, I thank God. So they came around 15 people, but at first everyone was like, Ah, to take kumshika, PSTC to take a customer. There's that mentality people have come close to a person who has that thing, you stick. So I told them, No, I'm with you, come guys, help me. I'm a naskeu chungu. Oh my god, so you can only achieve people was. Yeah, they're just surrounding me, they drew me so backwards. True, but I understand them, even if I was in the same position, I don't know if I could have. To help because you have the same mentality when you go close to someone. 
that shows the same way that I can be a lot. Precisely, yeah. People are lacking that knowledge. Yeah. And I thank God because there's one guy who said, Um, Stiana utu salimia kila siku wa kipita, akingia kwa gorofa, wacha ni msaidia kama ni kukufa ni kufe na yeye. Then the guy, the guy lifted me, the rest came, akona wa jachomeka. I can't even remember the name, but I... Shout out to you. God bless you wherever you are. You saved my life and uh, I'm grateful today. And uh, it was a good beginning because ange kubali kunisaidia, the rest were just staring at me. There were so many people. The one who took you out, like no. Was there anyone or anything? There was no rain. Small sun uh, during May after the drizzling and everything. You said like. So like really, sun. how is it now? What's really happening now? Yeah. But the only thing I remember the people around me, I screaming. By the time they came, my clothes were on fire. Oh so I was burning. That's why people could not come close to me. You and are. yeah, my clothes burned. And everyone was like, to Kim Shika to see to Tanzania to Jamaica. What was going through your mind at that time? Help. Were you thinking that maybe God is forgotten? No. I've been brought up by, to say my mom is a pastor. I've been brought up in a family where my faith is so strong. There's something I tell people. I remember telling God before people could rush to come and help me. God, I've lived to serve you in my days of my youth. For this moment, remember me and let me live. Then I remember certain verse that says, God is not pleased with the death of young people, immature people. So I knew I would not die at this age. Oh my God. So I just said, it's okay. I'm actually having <laughs> So I told God, allow me to live. Because that time I was 19 years old. I was very young. I had done nothing to this world. Precisely. And then I told God, spare my life for today, I want to live. And I never knew what would really happen in life. I never even knew I would lose my end and how life would be. And but I thank like, God. At the same time, it was not going to be important at that time. Were you not thinking that maybe here was going to be were not in that place. That's time it's you and God. Basically to save your soul. And uh, some point I even told God, if this is your will, you know there are things that happen according to the will of God. Yeah. If it's your will for me to part in this world today, accept my soul in your place, not to the fire of hell. <laughs> so I told no, God. On fire. Okay. Yeah, so it's a matter of saving your soul because that's what I tell people, once we're not more in this world, where will you go? So I was like, God, allow me to live. If there's an option for me not to live, spare my life, let me go back to you in the safe place. So I never even thought of boy. Even let me tell you, I never felt that pain of burning. You are numb, right? No, but there's, an, there's the science behind it. I was told by doctors that the first place of incidents you don't feel that pain. Yeah, true. But ask From me when right? when I got in Kenyatta, ask me how things were. So things moving fast forward, you were brought here to Kenyatta. Were your parents called? Your friends? Amazing thing, I'm the ones who gave them my number, my number of my mom and dad. They were saying like, say that God, God is real. Let people know that God is real and is very much able. There's and nothing he can't he do. Like very true. And what he does, no man can do. Everything in this world belongs to him. Power and everything belongs to God. I'm sure like, there are some people out there who are like, I let me, let me go through them more, but you're telling me that God is. How will you continue? God lives, but there are times that he allows us to go through something for reasons. So pain is part of God's work? Precisely that way he sees. In Isaiah, he allows pain to be a lesson to us sometimes. So not Precisely. And that's why Paul says, God, allow me to have enough for myself. When I have a lot, I may forget you. When I have little, I may even be, be not, not able to serve you, and people may forget whether it's God. And then you're going to be kind to us. Very true. Uh -huh. So moving fast forward, you're in ICU. So I, I was rushed to hospital. First, I was given a first aid. There was a doctor who was our neighbor in the next in the next building. Then I was rushed to Kenyatta. What I saw there, I don't imagine the rest of my life. We reached there around six. Then we found my dad was already in the hospital. So how long did it take you, like from the place from to the right? 
Less than an hour. I don't know how we made it. But the only thing I remember are the women who took me to the hospital at some point, they were telling me, no, I went from Gidurai to Kenyatta thanking God. Then they were like, your energy is too little, spare it to get to the hospital. Then I told them, no, if I never died in that scenario, God will say, spare me to the last was moment. Still speaking glory. Yes, oh I, God. I was not imagining that what has really happened, but I was optimistic. I knew things will be well because so, that assurance of God. Yeah. Were you operated on the same day? No. I must tell you, we stayed there for some hours. Were you still in pain? I remember a doctor shouting my name in the microphone, but I was really in pain. But shouting is good. I used to scream. They help me or I let go to the parish. I never saw my thing. Because this, uh, a woman I found there, we were that day, we were on that day. And the woman was saying she was there since Tuesday. And it is in the, in the, the basic place where I said, you know, um, oh, imagine we are out in Africa. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. That's the big, the remote place where you're supposed to get help. Yeah, and I was like, I've been here for two days, no help. So I asked my dad, what have I had? And he's scared, he's really mad, he's scared, he's bad. So the woman was there for two, for two days. The and you're still imagining, am I going to be at home? So when we come back, we're going to get candid on how she survived, and we're going to come back and tell you what happened and what transpired in Kenyatta National Hospital. Thank you so much for joining us on Celebrating Recovery. And today we're celebrating a young girl by the name Veronica. Zero. Man, thank you. So, Nikoshua, Wako, Wako, very anxious to do our work with the So now, Uko Kenyatta Hospital. And there's a lady and a complaint. She hasn't been attended to for the last two days. So, how did you do it? So you I know, just called. And you still have a life. You know. So I called my dad and I asked that ni me scare you, zuri man me scare you by. Then he went and asked the lady, what did you just say? The lady told my dad that ni me kuwa apa tangu Tuesday na sijakuwa. My son is very sick and sijakuwa admitted. And that's the emergency where you need to be taken care of yeah. uh, as fast as possible. And we're still saying that you have a health system. <laughs> so what I did, I just thought that she will be well and I told them go and try your best and talk to these doctors because I'm very much in pain and see what they can really do. And it's your life they are gambling with. Yeah, it was not easy but we thank God, finally I got help. I had my name being mentioned everywhere in the microphone in emergency. They gave me first aid again many vaccines, countless. Mm. Then I had to stay again in God's Mpaka. The time they treat some people, then they come back to me again. So listen, this is in the ICU. You're not yet in the ICU. You're not taken to the ICU before you pass through the emergency and accident uh, unit. Oh, okay. So I see it like a ward. You have to be admitted there uh, before. Oh, no. You understand? So, yeah, but at least for the Yeah, at least. Uh, but I scream, I, so I will tell people, once you're in the same situation, you go to Kenyatta, it's good to scream. I <laughs> so show no, 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 scared. You know, you're in pain, you cannot tell me you know how it feels and you've never been in the same position. So I scream every hour, I was like, doctors, I don't know what you're saying, I don't know what you're saying, I don't know what you're saying. Yes, so I, 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 I caused attention in the whole hospital and I was like, it's okay. But I got help through my screaming and shouting. And, um, I was admitted in ICU at 3 a.m. and I reached in hospital around 6 10. Oh my god. My dad and the other women were there the whole night. Much so, shout out to you, Pia. So. Thank you, Dad, so much. Uh, you're such a great man in this world. Oh, okay. So after that, what can you tell the war? The demands are still coming. I was like from 6 till 3, you had the same clothes. Yeah. 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 In fact, in the Tolewa, when I got um, in the last stage to be admitted in ICU. Yeah. So after that, I was taken to ICU. Dad was told to go back. No one is allowed to stay there. 
went back to my clothes. Nika kuwa kingo kingi ne apo chia hospitali nika va. Are you getting oxygen? No. Mama, how was your treatment? Perfect. I was struggling, but uh, there was shortage of doctors in that time because uh, I remember I had one doctor and a nurse. Well, you can't shoot like that. I was taken to ICU. Then I was supposed to be taken to theatre the same same day, but it was not possible. I remember another doctor saying, um, "Should we take this girl to theatre um, because I taken something that Thursday?" And no, when you're going to theatre, you can't come and anything. So that is risking your life. So one doctor was like, oh, "We need to save this young girl," and the other was like, "No, you're risking a life." So it was like a struggle so between family. the two. And they thought I was in coma, I was not hearing what they were saying. I, everything. Yeah. Just calling for the name of the Lord. God, I need help at such a time. Finally, I just stayed there. I don't know how I got some sleep. I slept till around 6. That was from 4. I stayed. No, at first I was crying because I was like, Dad is going. I know no one here. So you're like, and no one to talk to people in machines there. By the way, how I've, you I've never imagined you this in this you know. life. So I was like, Daddy, Usiende, Kama Uneza Katu, Apa Tuata, Kama Umembu, Sikai, Kapa, Chinia, Baby Yang, would that to pick a story to own gay? You know. And let me tell you, I'd never been in hospital in my life. And there's that cocoon that people said once you're in ICU, it's either dead, yani you will have to die. So, so <laughs> listen, you're there. Won't go perfectly fine. Most of them are in a coma. You cannot even see some people you're not concentrating. I had never knew where I was until I asked a doctor the next day. You know, if I've ever been there, you're not a woman to see outside. There it's you and your God. So the next, no, I never asked the doctor the first day where I was. So in the morning, Jusioni Mwangaza, the way I'm used to normal life. So I asked one of the doctors, God, the doctor, the one who is here, can I see you? I see you. Then my heart broke. Went back. What I've grown up knowing people in ICU, they die. So I was like, God, am I going to live or to die? But I still had positive attitude that I have to live. I have to live. That's yeah, promise of my God. You must fight in this life. Yeah. Life is a battle. Every day you wake up, you have to keep fighting for you to live, exactly. to survive. You have two options. Very true. To fight or to give up. And true. Go. And once you give up, you are gone. To fight, be a shadow of victory. Because the tougher the battle, the sweeter the victory. You wait to fight for it. Uh, so I stayed there for around two hours. Now that was in the six in the morning. Eight in the morning, the best thing happened in my life, I saw my mom. Oh my God, your strength. I saw my mom coming and she was crying. She was like, I saw her, I cried, then she cried. But there's one thing mom told me, Mpaka Waleo, I appreciate that woman. Nilimuiza, mom, nitapona, akina kaadi. No, I was not seeing a tan shingo ni jiangalie. Imkona, it was most affected. Ilikuwa mzito, nimefunga usiku yote. They are talking of taking me to the data, see what's going to happen. But mama assured me of one thing. Ocha ni kuambie vero. Wewe ni wangu. Ata umi ukae aje, ata ukosi miguna mikono. I will stick care of you all the rest of your life. Thank you so much, mom. By the way, thank you so much. So I was like, oh Those God, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Then after 10 minutes, I can do a in the engine. So now from, from that day, she was the only person who was allowed to get in that bed and see me. So, are you Rafi Zakwa, like, because I know things happen really fast. Yeah, and uh, the message was spread everywhere. In Kikamba stations, I heard they were saying I'm dead. Uh, in some radio stations, it is spread. What were you telling me you were dead? So, the machine went around, like, you, you had any time somebody comes into contact with electricity, they think that's dead. Because the cocoon around where they you believe. Yeah. I voltage. Yeah. And if Kamo Shiko interaction with the socket, Ile Kidogo Yanyumba, 
sijui kama ishii kushika kidogo how you feel <laughs> it draws you uh, like 10 meters away you yeah. beat everything around now you can imagine that is less than 240 voltage and i came into contact with the deepest wires the carries high voltage and, and you actually don't know how i don't know how i survived <laughs> One of the doctors asked me in Kenyatta, how did you survive a young girl, an Indian doctor? I told him, I don't know even me. The best thing you can do, get born again once we get there with the father, you can ask him how he survived. Because even me, I don't know how he survived. Oh so the next day I was taken to the theater. They operated this end of mine. That's not habitation. They were trying to save the end. Kapaswa paswa kidogo. So are you amputating? No, wow. The first time, ungeambu ingeenda ungekubali. It was just a normal thing. So Julie in a steamer. So they were saying what they used to say when I to a steamer. You understand the language. So I was taken to the theater. But at the first when the doctors told me like I'm gonna to survive, you could not really tell. Because the amazing thing, I stayed in Kenyatta one month and two days with my, my right hand. I've seen my hand, I've seen it getting Was it working? Would you move around? At the last point when I had to part with it, it was gone. I tried to touch myself, so like, no, see, these key senses are gone. It is black, you can't see anything. There was a hole here. I had hopes. I know. Like, so we are the best. And if we deal with one like that, and you would wake up in the morning, how would you feel and what would you feel about it? One thing I thank God for grace, He says that His grace is sufficient. And that's very true. Um, I thank Mama and Dad for bringing me in a strong faith, where that even in the worst things, I used to depend on God. I love what He says in Isaiah that I'll be your God all through your lifetime period. So I used to tell God, your promises are true and yes and amen. Your promise that you will be my God, not when I'm in good end, all the time of my life. Even it says, uh, even when you are old, when your hair is gray. So I'm young, so I was like, God, even now in this situation, you're still my God. Oh my God. I you're still I my God. <laughs> Yo. So I remained positive. I had friends uh, from the first day when I came out of ACU when everyone was able to see no, me. Yeah, Never a single day my mom came to hospital alone. There were people surrounded my bed and um, they brought me motivational book to read. There were people around me every time. They used to encourage me. And I'm always talkative. They come to hospital and instead of them giving me stories, I begin the stories. Um, it was not easy, but I made friends with the people in the world after I left, I see when no one could talk. But life there was not that good. Because every minute people were dying, so I they were like, like, am I the next? Am I? What's not happening? You have to fight for life to live. That's one thing I tell people. Many people don't agree with it. God says that he has given you power in your tongue to claim death and life. One thing I say, when you want to die, you will automatically die. You claim that today you want to die, you will automatically die. From the first moment, even from Muyoko, I used to say that I will not die. I have to live. Because, no, that says every word in spirit represents something. We live in a world of effect and consequences. Even a single word in Unasemanga Kimchezo Mchezo, it goes to spirit and it makes impact in the, the world. Power of so that's why I tell people if you want to die today, even not when you're sick, you can die. When you feel, look at this man called David. He dies at a very uh, 70 years old. There are many people in the Bible who lived for many years. But David limits God and says that the days of a man are 70 years. And he dies and at the age of 70. So I always tell people, I try to encourage people, don't claim that you will die. Even precisely that will be your portion. In situations, see life, see God. God is greater than anything. I love what he says in his word that have. It is footstool of God. Just see where you are seated right now. That is the footstool of God. How big is this God where you seated today? So, where you are stepping right now. And that's the heart. They have never gone around, even three quarters of it. 
na hapo ni Mungu mahali amekelea tu miguu how great is this god so i believed in life so what i used to do in hospital to keep myself busy i used to preach to the rest in the world in my word but for them they would believe you know you are not the people who is telling them and you are in good condition you are the same person who is sleeping in the hospital bed they can so see, you know, I heard that uh, doctors could tell that kama kuna mfana pitu uchungu kwa hii ward niyo msitiana miss jafungwa sana sijaumia because only this side, my both ends and like I could afford to have my clothes, like the hospital clothes but my ward mates hapo ata kuna wengine they could not dress up because they were dressed up by wood do you understand? Yeah. they had burnt, do you go to Fordin, Kenyatta it's about burns they're not even able to wake up to do anything like you understand. So when you are telling them they still hope and you are still in the same bed, they can understand you right better. No, then someone else like you is just the going there precisely. So. so that's what I could do in the hospital. Uh, we could share stories and I thank God that we were here to talk to talkative people. We, I love singing, we could sing. Doctors when you could just say, we have to remain. <laughs> So even I love my ward mates, but unfortunately, you guys still talk? Some sad news is that uh, most of them died, they lost their lives, two of us survived. Out of the whole world? Precisely. And the rest, I, they are gone to be their father. And uh, I found all of them there, and after two months, I left all of them there. Uh -huh. Only one passed when I was still in the hospital. And uh, I really know people can stay in hospital even for three and four years. Yeah, they, they can. Surprising thing, I went back to hospital last month. There's a young girl I found her and had left her in the hospital back in 2016. I cried and I told God, when I forgot even I was in hospital, there's such young soul still in the same ward, in the next ward. And that girl was there in 2015. That is when I was in my first year. Those are four years down the line. Nabada ko in the hospital, so I was like, really, is this normal? Why? Why? Because at times, yeah, when I draw, there's that part in the whole God. Why are you giving me way too much in the last few minutes to this person? Are you trying to be a person? But so, when I talk about Hosi, so I decided to go back to school. It was not that easy. I stayed in home so, for around semester. I can imagine. You went to school with two hands, now you have to go back to school with one hand. But there's one thing that gives me strength in this life, and uh, I say the second best decision I made in life after getting born again is one week in Kenyatta that I refused with my right hand. One of the normal Wednesday, I just doctor comes and tells me, we need to do you habitation. Even I'd never had such oh. word in dictionary, habitation. What are you telling me? Um, they told me emergency. Akanza kunyelezea. Nikamuliza, I hope you are sober. Unaniambia? Yeah, even today the doctor can't. I go back to Kenyatta, he was like, this girl, leave her alone. I almost gave him a slap. You were fighting for your hand. You know, I know there was not that guidance like. This and this is happening. But though you were not going through counseling or anything? No one thought it could happen. So, we need by Sasaba to find an emergency theater. Your hand is gone. You can't let it go. No, uh, I'm sorry, I was a bit rude. What I know the doctor is. I feel you. I you. I feel you. I feel you. I feel you. I feel you. I you. I feel 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 you. I you. you. A point in a kujuna ambiwa, imugu yako leo itakuwa na wewe. Like, you have learned to walk. Me. What are you telling me really? I wasn't born in Israel, but you're here telling me that. Ah, I felt it and I really cried. Then I told the doctor one thing. There's nothing you are losing. If my end is gone, you are not my mother nor my father. You're not even from my family. So you're like, ah, you're Let like, it stay. you're getting paid, you don't really care about it. Yeah. 
So I told him, you just go. And the day I feel like I am able to uh, accommodate this, I will call you back. And he did exactly the same thing. He walked out of the ward and he went back. What? And it was a routine of my mom every day and my dad to come to hospital. So they would bring food, water, everything. They were in school. They did not seen me for two months and a half. They used to hear the news. You were the first one? Precisely. I'm the only daughter in the family. And thank God. So mom came and came and Mom, we have bad news. I can't really imagine what your mom was going through. Because I know a lot of women out there only want to have both hands and their kids are having one. It was not easy. My mom has struggled with that thing for most a year. Akubani that this is real. Because... Till it, now, Akubani? How much is getting in terms of it? No, I, I try to strengthen her. Those are two years down the line, she's not strong. And she was like, how? So reception yako shule, reception yako mtaani, how are people taking you? Unajua? You have to be strong on your own. What really helped me is that I was positive about life. I never gave people any room to give me sympathy. Or what I tell people is that how you introduce yourself to the world, that matters a lot. Introduce to people you. Uh, that you're weak, everybody will see that you're weak. Introduce yourself yeah. like you're strong, you're so strong. Even today, at an Ikifika stage in our estate, every Makanga knows Mweshimiwa Asmamisho Gari Ashuke. I tell them, come out and Ismamisha, don't let me get in in that vehicle. Naikisiwa Mataka Nikonyuma, stand, wait until I get out of that vehicle, then it moves on. Because when you allow people to, to show sympathy and like, um, you are just simple, like you cannot do anything on your own. Human beings take that chance well and they know how to use it well. So I remained strong. I went back to school and. Uh, yeah, I, was, I could not transfer because I've already done my first year. Yeah. So you had to teach yourself to be a Back in the hospital, this is what I did this. Before I could be taken to theatre to be habitated. I, my, my uncle uh, brought me a biro and a, a book and I taught myself, thank you Uncle Jackson, I taught myself outright so I could wake up early 5.30 in Kenyatta and teach, no, God gave me grace, even doctors were wondering, they were like, even today they always call me back to go and talk to people in the hospital. They do? Yeah. So are you motivation? Are you motivation? That is what I love in my life, precisely. So I taught myself how to write. Is that how you feel about your writing? You know, I understand you're writing a book. Yeah, on attitude. Even before back in high school, I used to say I'll be an author. I never knew how God would lose me. I never knew. But finally, I began to write a book before New Me. But I changed that book. Now I'm doing a book on attitude. And I'm hoping before... Uh, April next year, and Takwan may publish. I'm done with I it. I hope celebrating recovery is going to be the first place you're going to launch it. Precisely. Surprise. Thank you so much. <laughs> I will do that. <laughs> so, so, what do you do right now? Apart from school and your motivation, and you motivating other people? I do missions. Any single chance I get, I do mission. You still sing? Do I want that to is my thing. <laughs> I love doing that and I'm also working on my songs. Uh, but singles, first or yeah. No. I'm doing them alone. You don't want to give it's, it's <laughs> no I don't want that thing. I'm a worshipper. My it's basically a worship to tell God thank you. Sifano to kufu zikurudi wewe mungu. Mano metenda mamo maku na ya jabu. Kwangu buzangu si kudan in tafika mbali u. Maybe you could try. It will be a surprise. I don't want people to, to hear about it before the time. Uh -huh. So it will be a surprise to the world. And uh, after I taught myself to write, I went back home. I stayed for a semester. That was back in July. Then after... You passed the exam? I went back to school and I sat for the exam and uh, I did well. The only B I had out of six units. Thank you to our vice chancellor and our administration. The special consideration in school. Yeah. Anytime I have a complaint, anytime they're marking my papers, they know there's somebody who can't do what everyone is doing. Though I use my, my artificial hands to draw. But you no, don't use it to win some classes, right? No. Okay. You go through what everyone else is going through. There's no special thing in school. Okay. I sit in class like the rest, I write my own notes, I listen, I do the cards, exam, there's nothing special. 
just feel on a, on a normal day. Normal but I've been on one mission since I went back to school to prove to the people that disability is not an inability, but so now when you meet other people, you're like, I know how you feel. I prove to them through the writing because I make sure that even after we do exam, they'll come back and ask who was leading. So I make sure that God gave me that grace. So in, even in the class of 300, you may not know everyone, but everyone has to know me. And I love what lecturers they do. Uh, when they cut or uh, let a cut, uh, they have to say who was leading. So I work extra hard in school to prove to people that you can still do it in life. Yeah. And um, people with disability, they're not in, in disabled mentality. By the way, that's who we should we should try to change that mentality. Kenyans are very bad. People are like, ah, and still there's a cost of us because of it. Precisely, but a lot of people are not getting job opportunities out there. Yeah, but we have a council that fights for the right of disabled people. Is it active? Yeah, active. they even pay school fees. Um, they told me after school I take my paper. I'm waiting for them in January. I'll take my papers there. They, get, they, they look for me where there's a chance to fit me in the society. That is their work. You're speaking fire. I'm loving your attitude. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm doing it and uh, I'm in the last chapter. So I'm sure you're not all that serious. No. I love doing jokes. I'm the best joker. You're the ones to do comedy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a I love doing joking things, uh, comedy. Given a chance, I can do that. Um, you sure? In fact, that's Veronica to church. You sure? Precisely, yeah. Are you hoping you get married? Are you dating someone? Because you're all over you dating someone before you had that. Accident. I'm saying I'm concerning that. Why? You should tell us. Like a lot of the others, why? You know, if a while you want to be you know, if someone loves you the way you are, you won't have to bleed yourself. You won't have to go and lay low with sponsors. You know, so you have to show people. You know, when you're not offended, you're offended. You know, you want to be offended with one hand, and you can't do That's what you do. The same person I was with before that. Is the same person. Oh my god. god. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, <laughs> so learning change, learning Christ in the dark. Learning Christ, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, love is not about the reason for parents the inside thing. But not really generation, a lot of people a lot of people are like, ah, me like a calendar straight thing. But to you all girls, you must hear love that is really change. If someone loves you, you won't have to go out there and sleep with all the sponsors. You won't have to lose your dignity to get something, right? So I'm eager to know what your KPLC or the owner of the premises. Were you compensated? Because you have see like it's Yama. Were you using any medical medical card? How was it for you? Were you compensated fasting fast? Not yet, but I'm still following. Uh, Dad say the best thing you are alive with thank God and um, recover, go back to school, pursue your career the best thing in the world, be a woman of integrity to be a blessing to this world, then precisely and everything shall follow. So that's what exactly happened. So but now we are trying to follow up, right? We are the people trained to follow up and we are hoping everything shall be well. You know we are not lawyers and we cannot judge and say it's KPLC or it's the landlord because you never know who was in the mistake and why. So and it might be God's reason for you to lift him up. Very you true. I believe it never happened without a reason. Mm -hmm. so Nothing happens without a reason. Very true. Yeah. So what would you tell all the people out there? Some are going through a lot, depression, some are suicidal, some are going through what you go through. Some are out there thinking that hey my day shaku a mouth life. Maybe God has abandoned you. What would you tell that young girl out there who had a dream of becoming someone but she was cut short because of an accident or anything? So first I would like to talk to people of my type, my brothers and sisters who have disability outside there. Whether you were born like that or it caught up on the way in this journey of life, um, first thing, accept yourself. Because I must tell you, unless you accept who you are, the world will never recognize you. Um, be yourself. 
Let the best version of you be in this world. Don't be a photocopy of anything else. Don't fake yourself. Where you are weak, let people know that you are weak so that they can out help you. And whatever you are best in, just go ahead and do that. Uh, so be positive in this life. Accept yourself. I tell people you can't spread unless it is inside without you. Exactly. So uh, when you are happy, you can only spread to me happiness. When you are The same thing applies. So unless you have that inside motivation, intrinsic, every day wake up knowing that I'm the best, that I can do this. Don't wait anyone to come and motivate. You know, any time you're just waking up, know that like you're existing in your own world. You you you're just alone. Each and every person has his or her own journey. Very true. God has different styles for all of us. I believe in so that. What, what, do, you, do you look at yourself in the mirror and what do you see when you look at yourself in the mirror? Secret woman of God. Um, the I, love, I, love, <laughs> I love how spiritually you are. So what do you see I love God so much. Let me tell you, in you wouldn't be here. I could not be surviving and do what I've gone uh, in life. Nah, I thank God so much. Like, Even there are things I see in my life like I could not have made it. It's, not, it's just by the grace of God. And uh, I love that God will allow me to continue living for almost 170 years and travel all over the world and tell people that God is real, motivate people. Uh, don't live like you're helping people to fill spaces in the world. I always tell people, <laughs> you're, you're not helping us to fill the space. Don't survive. Please live. Life is not a rehearsal. I tell people that every time I'm just online. You're not like my my partner to live. You are you are own partner. You are you are having your own company in this world to live. You won't be asked like Veronica. I'll be asked. Very true, and that's why I believe so, God created everyone with a purpose. Your purpose, not my purpose. Live like a comp precisely, and everyone has our own journey in this world. I say every day, life is a battle. When the battle fails. Fight like you never fight again. Life is not a fanfare, but a warfare. Fight. And at the end of the day, there's a short victory. I love what he says in John 16, 33. In this world, we'll have to be lessened, but be of good courage because I've fought the world. Victory is a portion. So I every day just know that victory is my portion despite what I'm going through. Victory is my portion. Me, I don't have class, no anything, I'll just do it. Sorry? So what is your son? I will see myself in, um, somewhere, uh, a great a woman of God in the world, um, speaking life and encouraging people, being a reference to the whole world and a voice of hope to people. And every time I'm just uh, looking at the mirror, I always feel like I'm speaking to the audience because now I have that passion of speaking to people inside me. So anytime when I'm doing my makeup, everything, I'm always speaking, I'm singing. So I'm always imagining like recording my, my song, I'm speaking, motivating people. So I, I see future, I see great things, and uh, those are yeah, promises. Precisely. So where people find you? And people, do you do, are you a motivational speaker? Yeah. Like? Can people book you up for sessions? Yeah. So where can people basically find you? Anywhere you want to find me, you can always get me. Uh, on Facebook, I'm Veronica Katunge. <laughs> I have a YouTube channel. You follow there, you get some videos. Veronica Katunge? I'm Vero on Katunge. On all your social media platforms? No, I either Veronica, I'm a Vero. On YouTube, I'm Vero mm -hmm. Katunge. Facebook is Veronica Katunge. Instagram is Veronica Chalo. Chalo is my dad. I have to mention him somewhere before so, I change that name. <laughs> <laughs> so remember, guys, it's Veronica Katunge, Veronica Chalo, Veron Vero. Yeah, Vero Katunge. Vero Katunge. Thank you so much. Yeah. Hey, Leo, are you speaking fire? You speaking life? Yo, I love your energy. I do preach. You know, I'm a daughter of a pastor, so. That spirit, like, PK, like, my precisely, we are PKs. I'm proud to be a PK. I thank God for that. So, and even to the PKs, we're having a very big conference in Uganda from next week. You're most welcome. Join us in Uganda. Wow. So, you'll be going to Uganda? I'm hoping so, but I have exams. I'm thinking about it. Okay. But I would miss it. It'll be great. So, anyway, thank you so much. Mm -hmm.
keep on shedding light to people, mm -hmm. keep on spreading God's word, mm -hmm. and you know what? Mm -hmm. You've inspired a lot of people, mm -hmm. and basically, you've inspired me. Thank you so much. So, to all of you out there, remember, there is light, and there is light at the end of the day.